Hello guys, Sherify here. Today I'm gonna give you guys some quick tips using Blender to export for Godot. Some of these tips will be for just using Blender in general, but others are gonna be important for exporting to Godot. So stick around and let's get into it. First tip, keyframing. Normally when you grab a bone and wanna animate it, you normally hit the I key and then you'll see like maybe rotation and location rotation or location rotation scale. But if you want to skip that step, you could go to Pose, Animation, Change Key Inset, and then select whichever one you want. So let's go Location Rotation. So now whenever we hit the I key, that automatically just inserts Location and Rotation. And you could also do it in the Timeline. So go to Key in here, and you'll see that we have Active Key Inset, Location Rotation. You could either get rid of it, so we go back to the regular, or we could even do it back here and set it back to Location. Next step, after creating a new action, you need to first hit this field here. It saves the animation so you don't lose it if you don't stash it. So in other words, if this isn't added to an energy track, it will get deleted whenever you exit. So hidden fake user allows it to stay. Now we need to stash it. So push down. This adds it to the energy editor. Here it is, jump. So now whenever you export your object with the animations, uh, these are the names that will be used in the animation player. So we could save this here and then let's go over to Godot. Let's open up this pen object. So here are the names. These are all the names from the NLA track. So normally you would come in here and change maybe the walk animation for example to be looping. You could come here and do it here. Or in Blender, what you could do is go on the walk animation and rename it, add in loop to the end of it and save and now if we go back here and re-import then create an instance of that scene that walk animation will now be a looping animation by default go ahead and do that to all the animations that we need to be loop now if you accidentally create a new strip by mistake so for example if we're messing with idle again and we accidentally stash it in order to delete it normally you think you could just click here or somewhere and delete press the delete key that will delete the action but not the actual strip so the way we fix that is you have to first select the strip that you want to delete then you have to keep the mouse in this area and then you press the delete key and that deletes it it's kind of a weird thing but if you're over here it won't do it it's in the star mutes all the other uh, strips so you could look at each one individually. The walk, that one, idle, and jumping. The lock disables editing. For example, let's unlock these. So here I could move this around. If I lock it, cannot edit, can't change it anymore. And the strip mark means it contributes to overall thing. So for example, if I have a bone not animated by anything here in this action, one above will take over so all the bones here are animated as well as these for the jump so the jump takes over for the whole frame that's what that's for okay so here we have an awesome model by author from my discord group you could join below in the description this model has all separate parts and if we exported this with these animations here all of these animations would be separate so we could take a look over here so we'll open them up so these are all for idle but we want that to be a single animation. So the way to do that is, let's go back in then. We need to rename all of these to just idle. So let's do that real quick. Now let's save that and then we could check back over here. Now we have that one idle animation that plays the entire robots animation. Create an instance. Let's take a look at it. Animation player and idle. There you go. So it's all separate objects and it's all being animated with that one animation. And if you want to loop it, you add a loop into all those idols. Now we save and then we could try that again. There you go. And now it's a looping animation. Now while we're here, we could actually insert keyframes for multiple objects at the same time. So first we need to create an action for each part. So let me do that real quick. All right, so now that we have all of them created, make sure they're all selected. So left shin walk is on the left shin, left thigh walk is on the le left thigh, etc. So right, 
stretch in, body walk, and arm, and arm again, oops, arm again, right arm. Now to animate, we could actually just create an animation real quick. We just quickly do it. All right, now that we have this created, we can now, uh, let's select all of them. Like that. So these are the only ones I have created actions for. You could actually insert a keyframe. So hit I, then location rotation. What that does, it's inserting a keyframe on each action. All right, so here we have a simple walk cycle. I know it's not perfect, but just for the tutorial. So now we have to push down each one of these. So let's select the ones that we created actions for. So first, push down. This one, we need to push down as well. And leg, the body actually, push down. Legs. All right, let's stop that. <laughs> there you go. So now in the NL editor, need to do what we did before. We need to rename all of these to walk. Let's stop that and let me do that real quick. All right, so now I could save. Get back into Godot. Now we should have a walk cycle. This guy, we have a walk. Here we are, and we're playing it. All right, uh, that should be it for the tutorial. So apart from that, if you guys realize I'm using blend files here, the, reason, the way you get that is go to the editor, editor settings, go to import under the file system, and then just specify the blender path. Mine's on Linux, so my name, programs, wherever you have your blender file. And that should be it. Like and subscribe, guys, and thanks for watching.